Hey everyone. If you're watching this video, then congratulations on getting here to this point. I know you've put in a lot of work already, and this is where things start to become pretty fun. So what we're going to do to start, in the last video, we position athlete and team averages, best, and worst values for the metrics that we picked. And in this video, we are going to have a fun little interaction and be able to choose what we want to see. And to do that, we have a couple of options. Just like in the last video, we brought in the athlete's values into this tab, this ugly looking tab, even though we already have them on the testing dashboard. We don't need them in both places. We have them there now, but I wanted to bring this up because it illustrates that you can perform these calculations in multiple places. And if you perform them in one place, you don't necessarily have to perform them in another. We're going to see that now because what I wanted to say is that the functions that we do now, we could apply them directly onto this page. But in our case, or what we're going to do is we're going to apply them onto this chart data page so that we can see them in context with everything else and make sure that our data is right. If you're doing it on your own, you could do it just on the testing dashboard page, but you have to click back and forth between sheets and such. But in any case, either are possible. There's a reason why I'm doing it this way, and it's so that everything remains on this page and you can see it all together. Whereas if I were doing it alone, I might just go directly and perform the calculations on this page as we did initially with bringing in the athlete values. Okay, where am I now? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to create a drop down menu first. We're going to highlight J, K, and L3 and merge them together. Go to data, data validation, and this drop down menu is going to be of the potential things that we want to compare. And what we select in this drop down menu will change the comparison numbers that we get back in this dashboard. Let's go to reject input and click on this data range thing, little icon, and go back to our go to our chart data and highlight position, team, and athlete all time. Now these are going to be the three things that appear in your drop-down menu, and when you select it, what you will end up getting is information relating to your selection. So let's click OK and save. We'll go back to our testing dashboard and just check and see, okay, yep, we got some things in the drop down. And maybe we just format it the same way that we did before or with the, the other stuff, gold background, white font, center align, vertically aligned, maybe it's a 12, I don't know. Probably redo the formatting of this stuff. And now we're going to learn about a function called choose. And we'll use this oftentimes. I like choose for a couple of reasons. The first is that it makes other formulas less complicated. And the second is it allows me to go through each of these calculations with you and not feel bad that I'm waste, wasting anyone's time. So we're going to use choose here. Go equals choose. And what we're going to use with choose is we're going to choose which one of these we want based on some criteria. And it's not a traditional use of it, but the first thing that you need is an index. So what number in your list of choices are you going to get? Let's just type in number one, comma. And what comes next are your possible choices. So let's select this K6, comma, L6, comma, M6. So we want to choose one of these three values, either the position best, the team best, or the athlete all time best. And right now we're choosing option one. And if we close the parentheses and click enter, notice the first option in our list shows up. And if we go back to choose and we select number two and click enter, now we get the second value. And the same would work for the third value. And this is great, but it's not dynamic. We want to pick what we want to, or we essentially want to choose on the fly. But before we go any further here, and because this will be helpful for us, is let's do what we've been doing here. We're bringing in key pieces of information that we select or information related to the athlete that we picked 
and we store it right here to make things easier. So let's do that again. I'm going to copy this selected session uh, header, paste it here, and I'll call this selected comparison cohort, right? And we'll make beneath that, we'll make it equal to go to our team dashboard and select whatever we picked in our dropdown and click enter. So now we know here's the player we selected, here's some information, here's the session we selected, and here's the comparison. Great. If we go back to this choose function, instead of number two now, we want to do a match. We want to use the match function so that we can make it dynamic based on that dropdown. And the, the way that this will work is we can remove that number two and type in match, open parenthesis, and we are matching this word, right? The word that we picked in our dropdown, comma, to, we're matching that to these three words up here, which are the same as in our dropdown, which needs to happen for this to work. And we did that intentionally. We created our dropdown from these three words so that they cannot mismatch. Comma, zero, close the parenthesis. So now what we're doing, or now what we're saying is we're saying, I want to choose or I want to get one of these three values, which are the position best, team best, or athlete best. And to decide on that, we want to match what we pick from our drop-down menu to these three names, and whichever one it matches with, essentially, let's get that value. And let's just, before we do anything else, let's lock in the A with a dollar sign before the A, dollar sign before the 16, dollar sign before the K and the 3, dollar sign before the M and before the 3, and that's it. We're good. And let's click Enter. Now, let's copy this formula and paste it down here. And what we should see is that these best values are all from the position because we selected it in our dropdown. So they should match all of these values. And again, to check, if we go to our team dashboard and we select team, go back to chart data, now these values should represent the ones for the team. And they do. Great. Now we just need to copy this formula over, paste it to the average, and change the values that we're looking for. We still want to match what we select to these three words, assuming that they're the same for the averages and the worst. But the values that we want to get now are not L6, are, are not the best values. We want to get the average values. So let's erase those. And we'll go N6, which is the position average, comma, 20. 0.9, which is the team average to the athlete all-time average. The order is important here. It's important that, that this order is consistent. And we can click Enter. So now, again, we're selecting from these three options now, which are the position average, team average, and athlete all-time average, based on the what we pick on our drop-down menu, with the position being first, team being second, athlete being third. And we can copy the formula and paste it over again. And again, change what we're looking at, because now we want the worst values. And the three worst values are right here, Q6, comma, R6, comma, S6. And again, nothing else changes with the match criteria, because again, we're looking for the position, team, or athlete all time. Click Enter. And we can copy these formulas and paste them down. And what we should notice is that because we have team selected in our dropdown, all of these values are relating to the team. Okay, great. So how do we get these on our dashboard? Like I said, we have a couple ways of doing it, and we decided to do it. We decided to do the calculations in this chart area, which allows us to make our calculations really simple in our testing dashboard, in our team dashboard. So let's go here and let's type in best, maybe average. And worst. And to get these values, all we have to do is do an equal sign, right? So we can go equals for the best. The team best is, go to our chart data, we select our chosen best, which is right here, which aligns with the CMJ average. And click enter. 
And now we can just copy this formula and paste it into all these cells. And maybe for now, I'll just remove a bunch of, a bunch of decimal points here. And now we have the team, best, average, and worst. And if we select position, we change. Now we have the position, best, average, and worst. If we select the athlete all time. Now we have the athletes all time, best, average, and worst. And I'm actually going to move all this stuff over one because I want to, uh, man, I got to unmerge. Sorry. Merge, unmerge, move it over, and drag, move it over. And we'll move, merge this again. Because I actually want something to go here, which is the athlete's difference from the average of what, whatever cohort we select. Now let's bold these words, and we'll vertically align them, center align them. And we'll just make this look a little bit nicer for now, because I don't want, I know how everyone loves visual stuff. We'll highlight the back of these, like light gray, and I'm going to change the colors of these two. Maybe I make their background actually have a dark green that I want to use because I want to represent my, my team's colors. So let's, uh, I'm going to change it to that dark green background and the font is, is white and I'll bold all of these and we'll add some borders a little bit later. I'll make all these bold and again, let's kind of remove a bunch of decimal points and we'll figure that out a little bit later. Maybe everything in the best column is, is green. Everything in the average column is black. Everything in the worst column, I don't know, is going to be some sort of red. And what I would also like to do is start setting up, we'll say, what we want here is we want to have some sort of difference or some sort of immediate way to see how this athlete compares to some, some of these things. And to do that, we're going to say, like, difference. We'll say this is diff from make it bold and we'll do that Varela around thing and vertically align and center align. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to narrow this row. Let's make the row size set of 39. Maybe it's just 25 like normal rows. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And in the next video, we're going to get differences from whatever. We, it's going to be really dynamic and, and you'll see kind of how this works. And yeah, uh, I'm excited to see you in the next video.